Welcome to the Rugby Player's Guide to France, made just for you by Brightrock, a series of top South African rugby exports who spent time playing the game in France, look back at life on and off the rugby field and what it was like moving abroad to play the bounce in a new part of the world. Welcome to the Rugby Player's Guide to France. And though it might look as though I've just climbed out of that fountain, it's simply the effect of being out and about on a spring day in Paris. Now, the weather's not normally this bad, even when it is, though, right across the country, there is so much to explore and enjoy beyond just rugby, as so many stars from South Africa who've lived over here have discovered. And that's exactly what we will discover today in the company of one of those rugby stars as we head off to Saint-Étienne. Welcome to the Rugby Player's Guide to France, made just for you by Brightrock, where every week I catch up with a fabulous South African export who we've sent over to France to raise the quality of their rugby and lift their culture a little, and who's then returned to tell me all about life in a very important rugby playing part of the world. And my guest this week is not just a rugby player, he's also a fabulous doctor and a great lover of the world of France. And like me, he's braving a rather chilly Johannesburg afternoon. Dr. Yanni Duplessis, welcome. Dan, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, yeah, it is quite chilly here. But um, it always it always makes my heart feel warm when I see you. So yeah, <laughs> thank you for that. We both got our jackets on because as skinny athletes, we need to try and keep warm in this cold weather. Does it remind you of January, February in places like Paris, where uh, summer weather is a long way away? <laughs> Listen, January in Paris, uh, we played there once, and I couldn't feel my hand, hands or my feet. And it, I think it was probably the first and only time ever in my life that um, on the rugby field, I, I could not wait for the game to be over. <laughs> so I don't think it's quite there yet, but for Johannesburg, it, oh, it's quite chilly today. <laughs> Tell me about playing rugby in France when you get over there. We often think of French with their flair and running rugby and lots of excitement, uh, but they've also got a history of some pretty hard men in the scrum. What was that element of rugby like? F French rugby is... It's something between um, amateur and professionalism. So you've got these incredible athletes. Most of the clubs um, have big budgets, so they, they buy the best players in the world or they buy, they buy the players that they want. But the soul of French rugby is very much um, a little bit, uh, I, I wouldn't call it, I can't say it backwards, but it's, it's a little bit, it's 10 years behind because they do like a little bit of argy bargy. They do like a little bit of forwards dominating and, and okay. kicking a guy on the shin and, and grabbing him here on the, on the jersey because I think French people, rugby for them is um, entertainment. It is, it's all about showmanship. And um, that's why, I mean, slow people like me can't score tries. So the only show that we can put on is like uh, maybe making the highlights real with the good uh, straight right. <laughs> <laughs> you also got to experience a different side of rugby in France, given that before that, you'd been there as a world champion, but as uh, playing for your country, now suddenly you're playing for the club and, and this is now home. How different was that? It, it, it took a bit of getting used to. Um, I mean, you always talked, to, uh, uh, if you talked about home, it was always South Africa, but after three years there, you realize that you and your wife have stayed in France for longer than what you stayed together as a family in, in South Africa. And after three years, it was strange to call France home. And, um, and you do, especially because they are so emotional, you do almost get caught up as well in, in the fact that you're playing for your city or your club. And, and that, 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 is, that is beautiful, I think, in, in, in in its essence, that is what rugby is about. You mentioned the family. You very clearly fell in love with France. Did they fall in love with France? They, they did. Um, my youngest, the other day, said, uh, listen, Dad, um, when are we going back to France? And I, I mean, it's the first time that he, that he said that. And I asked, did you like it in France? He said, yes, I liked it much more than, 
than here. <laughs> and I said, so, like, why, Franz Andreas, why did you like France? He said, no, I never had homework. <laughs> and we, we played in the park almost every day. And so, yes, the French have a very good quality of life. They, they've got a great balance between work and, and taking time off from work. Um, they, I always say that South Africans, they live to work, but the French, they work to live. So um, France is an extremely interesting and an extremely beautiful country that I think anybody would love. What about the travel side? Because you got to travel around, not just with the team, but I'm, I'm sure you got to have a bit of an adventure with the family during your time. Yes. You know what else we introduced them to? Branaman. <laughs> uh, it's funny because I mean, yeah, we you um, Richelieu is the ad for Richelieu is in the age-old French tradition, but when you get to France, you say you see that they only have cognac and not brandy. So we we actually <laughs> there was quite a few things South African <laughs> things that rubbed off on them. So so they thought you were going to teach them how to scrum and win them titles. You actually went over to teach them how to brine, drink brandy and coke. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, no, the the travelling is easy, um, especially if you can speak French. Not so easy if you only speak English. Um, <laughs> But yeah, France is a beautiful country and, and there's quite a lot of treasures there. Tell me about a part of France that I don't know too well. I've been having a look ahead to the rugby excitement this year and I see Saint-Étienne on the map. And I don't normally associate Saint-Étienne with France. What's your knowledge of Saint-Étienne? Saint-Étienne, um, they, how can I say, they, they have got a very good football team. It's very close to Lyon and um, Lyon is their arch rivals. Um, so there's a derby game, football game, uh, twice a year. We, our physio, doctor, uh, physio, doctor, osteopath, and one of the uh, management, all, all was this, uh, more or less the same age group. And when they were young, Saint Etienne was the best in France. So they are, they were massive, massive Saint Etienne supporters and then they really even though they they were rugby men and they loved rugby mm -hmm. for that game they traveled to St. Etienne they sat on St. Etienne's side and they they sang until they were hoarse on Monday so St. <laughs> Etienne is um is a very passionate area some very special memories Dr. Duplessis thank you for sharing them and uh, uh, I hope you and uh, and the rest of the family get back there soon because it's clearly got a special place in the heart. Absolutely. Thank you very much for the invitation again, Dan. And uh, yes, uh, I hope that you make the trip over to Europe for the World Cup as well. And I shall do so with a photo of you and that'll <laughs> let them know just how important I am. Just take a bottle of brandy, please. <laughs> and I will be fine. Dr. Yanni Duplessis, the man who set off for France to play rugby and instead had a cultural impact on the country as a whole. This is the Rugby Player's Guide to France, made just for you by Bright Rock, starring this week, the Brian and Branavain swinging Dr. Yanni <laughs> Duplessis.